My name is Chao Weasel and I am Agent M. I am Agent J. Joyce. I'm Gregi. Agent G. Hi, I'm Agent W. Wong Shuang Jie. Hi everyone, I am Agent C. Celeste Chua. Mr. and Mrs. Horton receive a letter which is a notice of intent of foreclosure because they are seriously behind in their payments due to the sudden increase of the adjustable rates. Mr. Horton's name was injured and Mrs. Horton lost her job. The bank teller did not want to help because with the current financial situation, the bank must take zero tolerance position on non-payment. Mrs. Horton raised the point that the government asked the bank to help the people like them. But the bank teller told them that if they don't pay on the 15th, foreclosure proceedings will begin. Before solving the issue raised in the scenario, it is crucial to understand the law of mortgages in order to deal with the issues efficiently. So, what is a mortgage? A mortgage is a contract, a contract between the borrower, the mortgager, and the lender, the mortgagee. They are free to decide what terms they wish for repayment of the loan, the rate of interest, and so on. This contract can be expressed when the parties negotiate and execute a mortgage by deed based on the standard terms and conditions of the lender. It can also be implied where the conduct of the parties in relation to the asset amounts to a mortgage or charge. The court will decide whether or not this was the intention of the parties or spell out in their agreement. Nowadays, most of the people see it as a method to raise enough capital to purchase a house or a land. Little did we know that it is also used as security for repayment of a loan or for the performance of some other obligations for much longer. Such security is redeemable on the payment or discharge of the debt and obligation as shown in the definition of mortgage in the case of Stanley. When the parties enter into a mortgage, a legal or equitable interest in the mortgage's land will be transferred to the mortgagee with a provision that the mortgagee's interest shall end upon repayment of the loan plus interest and costs. This proprietary interest in the land secures the mortgagee's contractual rights which include rights to sue for debt. The right to sue on the contract may be of little value if the mortgage is in financial difficulties. To ensure that the money lent by the mortgagee is not lost, the law protects the mortgages in a number of ways, such as giving them the rights to seek for possession, sale, and foreclosure when the mortgager fails to pay for the debt and these rights arise either from the agreement itself or under the rules of equity or statute. The fundamental principle of mortgage law, once a mortgage, always a mortgage, was laid down in the case of Thornborough. It means that once the loan is repaid, the mortgager has the right to get back the land unencumbered and any clauses that destroy the right will be struck out as inconsistent. The contractual nature of a mortgage allows the mortgages to be different from each other due to the different needs of the parties. All these different types of mortgages are governed by the Law of Property Act 1925. Now we will assess the current law of mortgages as to how both the mortgager and mortgagee's interests are being protected. In light of Section 91 Subsection 2 of the LPA 1925, the mortgagee can file a foreclosure suit against the mortgager. Such a suit can be filed on the condition that the mortgager fails to match the mortgage repayments arising from the contractual obligations as such in Williams and Morgans. Foreclosure is a judicial process where the mortgagee enforces their security through transfer of land and it's titled to himself by way of a court order. 
making himself the true owner of the property in law and equity as such under Section 88 and 89 of the LPA 1925. It is a potentially powerful remedy for the mortgagee as the right to foreclose extinguishes the mortgager from exercising his right of redemption as defined under Section 67 of the Transfer of Property Act 1882. There are two steps in the foreclosure order. Firstly, the foreclosure order Nisi was issued. A period of time, usually six months, was given to the mortgager to repay his existing debts. This is the final chance given and if he successfully does so, his mortgage is discharged. The second process is the foreclosure order absolute. It will transfer the title to the mortgagee and obliterate the mortgage's equity of redemption. If the court orders a foreclosure, the mortgagee is entitled to the entirety of the property. In National Westminster Bank, we can see that the court can also at request order a sales in preference to the foreclosure. The right of the mortgager to ask for sale of his own property and to have it granted is valuable for the mortgager whose debt up is increasing due to his inability to meet the interest payments. When the sales proceeds are such under Section 105 of the LPA 1925, the mortgagee can keep the entire sum notwithstanding the surplus and interest from the sales. This is detrimental to the mortgager as they receive nothing at all. An order for foreclosure, according to the practice of the old court of chancery, was never really absolute, nor can it be so now. In certain exceptional circumstances, the court wields the discretion of reopening a foreclosure order depending on the merits of each case. As illustrated in Campbell, foreclosure was reopened when there is a marked difference between the borrowings and the value of the property. Take the scenario as an example. Under Order Nisi, the couple will have six months to repay their debts. If they fail to do so, Order Absolute will be issued and it will extinguish the couple's right to redeem their property entirely. If the property's value exceeds that of the mortgage loan, after foreclosure, the bank will keep the entire amount for themselves. The Horton can request the court order a sale of the property instead as such under Section 91 Subsection 2 of the LPA 1925 to counteract the incoming foreclosure. After the property is sold by the mortgager, the proceeds can be used to pay off the debt and the Hortons can keep the excess amount if any. As mentioned by Sir Donald Nichols, Vice Chancellor, foreclosure actions are almost unheard of today and have been for many years. In order to balance the right of the mortgagee and the mortgager, foreclosure is normally a final resort for the courts as the court prefers possession and sales of the property. While foreclosure proceedings are going on or after the claim has failed, the mortgagee may want to take over the possession and manage it so that the property's value doesn't decline. Right to possession is usually prior to right to sale, but it might also be used to secure recovery of outstanding interest on loan. Mortgages charged by way of legal mortgage gives mortgagee a right equivalent to an estate as provided by Section 87, Subsection 1 of LPA 1925. Hence, the mortgagee may take possession at any time, including immediate possession, as stated in form made against Dudley Marshall. To apply for a right to possession, a court possession order would need to be made. Although the mortgagee has immediate possession, the court will not usually allow it as such right should only be exercised when the mortgager defaulted in the mortgage payment as stated in the case of Esso Petroleum against Alston Bridge. There may be some relief for the mortgager at default as Section 36 of Administration of Justice Act 1996 provides the court a wide discretion to delay or suspend the possession proceedings if the mortgager would likely be able to repay within a reasonable time. In calm case, the court had adjourned the proceedings for a short period of time to allow the mortgager to pay off the debt. So, what amounts to a reasonable period? It may be any fixed period of time, and the date when the period ends must be specific, as stated in the case of Royal Trust of Canada. Section 8 of AJA 1973 provided that the adjournment can only be granted if it is likely that the mortgager can pay off the arrest within a reasonable time. Yet, in grant case, the possession proceedings were suspended for one year even if the possibility of mortgages' ability to repay is extremely unspecific. There was no specific guidance on what is reasonable period, but later, the period was fixed to be three years at most. However, in Northern case, reasonable period was held to be the remaining full period
period of the mortgage and the mortgager would be protected by Section 8 as long as evidence to show that she could repay within the period. This case had hand shifted the law in favour of the mortgages. Nonetheless, the court will not exercise its discretion if there is no realistic likelihood that the mortgager can pay off the debt and current instalments. Also, the court may be less willing to adjourn the proceedings if the mortgager had defaulted in the payment for more than once. The mortgage's right to possession may be rejected when the mortgager wished to sell the property to pay off the debt as provided in Section 91, Subsection 2 of LPA 1925. Moreover, if a person is not the mortgager and only possesses equitable right, he or she may still ask for adjournment or suspension of the possession proceedings as provided under Section 39 of AJA 97B. However, Section 55 of Family Law Act 1996 provided that a connected person may still be a party to the proceedings if the court is satisfied that the person is able to meet the mortgager's liabilities. If they are joint mortgages, the possession proceedings are brought against both parties. Hence, taking the scenario video as an example, the possession proceedings may be brought against both of them as they have made contribution to the mortgage payment and may be able to meet the mortgage's liabilities. However, the court may adjourn the proceedings if it is satisfied that the couple's financial problem is just a temporary one with their long-term financial plans as proof. With this, the court may be satisfied that they may be able to find a new job and pay the arrears after the hackers' knees had healed. This may show that the court would balance the mortgages' right by giving them a chance to repay the debt. Moving on, due to the drastic nature of the right to foreclosure, the court will usually order the right of sale instead. The statutory power of sale is the most frequently utilised remedy of the mortgagee, which usually arises in conjunction with the right to possession. The mortgage's power to sell is provided under Section 101 to 107 of LPA 1925. No court order is required to exercise such right, but this statutory power can only arise if three requirements of Section 101 are satisfied. Next, the power of sell must have also become exercisable when one of the requirements in Section 103 is satisfied. The proceeds of sale are applied to satisfy the mortgage debt with the aim of discharging the mortgage. It extinguishes the mortgager's equity of redemption and the purchaser will attain the legal estate of the land. Although the mortgager is entitled to any surplus of the sale proceeds, a sale of the mortgage property, which could mean a forced loss of the land or even loss of home, might be a disastrous event for the mortgager. Hence, there are limitations to regulate this power. The balancing of the interests of both the mortgagee and the mortgager is at the heart of the mortgagee's duties in the conduct of the sale. Although it has been asserted that mortgagee is not a trustee of the power of sale for the mortgager, the mortgagee has a duty to take reasonable care to obtain the best price reasonably obtainable. Such duty would be satisfied if the mortgagee has taken reasonable care and was not negligent in obtaining the true market value. However, as provided in the case of Maya, as long as it does not result in a lower price than which is reasonably obtainable, the mortgagee has no liability if he fails to sell properly. Hence, whether the duty of care has been fulfilled is always a matter of fact. The mortgagee is also required to choose a method that is likely to attain the best price reasonably obtainable. Besides, mortgagee's right to sell must also be exercised in good faith with a view to discharge the mortgage debt. There is a long established rule that a mortgagee cannot sell to itself or to a trustee or agent acting on its behalf. The mortgagee can still sell to a company of which he is a shareholder, but the court will scrutinize his conduct closely to ensure that reasonable care has been taken. Although there is a duty of care owed by the mortgagee, the fundamental purpose of such power is to enable the mortgagee to secure the repayment of the debt. The primacy of the mortgagee's own interest during the sale has been affirmed in the case of Cockmere and Brick, where Lord Justice Selman asserted that the mortgagee may choose when and in what manner to exercise this power. Regarding the timing and method of the sale, a degree of latitude has been given to the mortgagee. The mortgagee does not have to hold off selling until the property market improves. 
Also, the mortgagee has no duty to improve the mortgage property or to sell the covenant separately to maximize the sale price. The mortgagee is only obliged to take reasonable steps to ensure that the property does not deteriorate in value. A mortgagee may exclude their liability by inserting exclusion clauses in the mortgage. Although such clauses can be effective, they are construed restrictively by the court to protect the mortgagee's interests. If duties aforementioned were breached by the mortgagee, the mortgagee may either seek an order to set aside the sale or claim for compensation from the mortgagee for the difference between the selling price and the best price reasonably attainable. However, a mere undervalue was insufficient to set the sale aside. There must be some impropriety. It must be shown that the sale price could not be reasonably concluded as adequate. In addition, as illustrated in the case of Horsham properties, if the mortgagee sells the property without first taking possession, the purchaser can evict the mortgager who is in his own home as trespasser. Justice Briggs held that the mortgagee's out of power of sale did not entail an infringement of the mortgager's human rights because it is a part of the bargain struck when a mortgage is entered. The mortgager could not rely on Section 36 of the AJA 1970 to apply for relief because it is only available when a possession order is sold by the mortgagee. The practical result of this case is worry, as the mortgagee's right was undermined. It has resulted in proposals to require the mortgagee from a residential owner occupier to obtain a court order to give the mortgagee the opportunity to access to the court's protection. It is important to balance the right of mortgager to redeem the property and the mortgagee's right to secure the payment. When the bargain of the parties are oppressive, such as the situation where the interest rate is overly high and the court will declare the clause to be void to protect the mortgagee's right of redemption. As illustrated in Cityland Properties, the interest rate must be of reasonable one, as unreasonably high interest rate would render the equity of redemption valueless. It was held in Paragon Finance that the interest rate had to be at a reasonable rate even if it varies. Thus, just like what in the scenario video, the adjustable interest rate that had increased but at a reasonable rate would not be an oppressive bargain and the mortgage's right to redeem could not be said to have been abrogated. Now, let us look at the current law of mortgage, where the COVID-19 pandemic has actually resulted in widespread economic upheaval for consumers and homeowners are now suffering from job loss, struggling to keep up with their mortgage payment due to their loss of income. Thus, the court and government has adopted new ways to balance the right between mortgagor and mortgagee and to protect the mortgagor right, especially during this emergency period. There are federal protection and guidance which will provide temporary relief for mortgagors who are facing foreclosure, allowing them to stay in place, at least guarantee them the right to housing as protected under ECHR. In the UK, the Financial Conduct Authority FCA provides mortgagor guidance that cover two key areas, namely payment holiday and repossession. The FCA states that mortgagors shall be granted a payment holiday where they are allowed to make no payment for an initial period of three months. Mortgagors can be granted either a full or partial payment holiday where mortgagors are allowed to make reduced payment. When the payment holidays come to an end, mortgagor can choose to repay the mortgage again and work with the mortgagee to find the best way of catching up on missed payment. If a mortgagor is unable to repay the mortgage in full, mortgagee may consider short-term option, which is another pause on mortgage payment, or longer-term option, which is extending the repayment term or restructuring the mortgage in other ways. Mortgagees shall understand and respond to mortgagor needs who have displayed the characteristic of vulnerability, particularly low financial resilience during this pandemic. Secondly, repossession proceedings should not be enforced against mortgages at this time of uncertainty and to comply with the government advice on social distancing and self-isolation. 
These apply irrespective of the stage that the possession proceeding has reached and where a possession order has already been obtained. Firms shall refrain from enforcing it. Several case law evidence that all the possession proceedings are currently state by civil procedure rules, practice direction 51Z. In Hackney London Borough Council, the Court of Appeal held that the automatic stay imposed applies to appeals from possession orders that will extend when the stay began. Similarly, in Arkin and Marshall, it was held that practice direction 51Z is lawful and the stay that it imposes can be lifted only in exceptional circumstances. So, the problem that the couple face in the scenario video are actually quite similar to what most mortgages are facing during this COVID-19 pandemic which has caused a severe financial downfall. In this emergency period, there are protection for the mortgage rights such as payment holiday and repossession and stay on possession proceeding. Mortgagee is actually required to comply with the guidance as has been made clear by the FCA. However, this does not mean that the mortgage's right will be extinguished totally as these are just a temporary relief for income shortfall and the mortgage will still need to make payment after the payment holiday period comes to an end. The mortgagee can still reactivate the possession proceeding after the stay imposed on it expired. Despite the right of mortgages mentioned above, such threat cannot be protected if it fails to comply with certain formalities. The principle of registration can be found in the Land Registration Act 2002. In order to create legal mortgages, one must ensure compliance under Section 23, Subsection 1A of the LRA 2002 in regards to formalities. For that, it is the only procedure where a mortgage of a registered land can come into existence. As such, under Section 52 of the LPA 1925, when read right alongside with Section 25 of the LRA 2005 and Section 37 of the LRA 2002, it says the following. A deed is required to create legal charges by way of legal mortgages and it only imposes legal effect if it complies with the manner and form prescribed and at the moment it was registered upon the title of the registered land. If else, it will default into a mere equitable mortgage. In Swift was against Chief Land Registrar, it was shown that the registration ensures the validity of the mortgage as a charge on the title. The failure to register the legal charge will cause the equitable mortgage to be vulnerable and unprotected. It loses priority to a legally registered disposition. In conclusion, as the parties of a mortgage, both the mortgager and the mortgagee should have the contractual rights and interest in the property. The property owner uses a mortgage to liquidate his income while the mortgagee uses it to capitalize his income. Hence, the mortgagee has the right to seek for remedies when the mortgager fails to pay the debt in order to prevent any loss of profits. In this video, we have discussed these remedies and how the interests of both parties can be protected by the current law. Foreclosure was once the most powerful remedy as it can transfer the mortgage property to the mortgagee and the mortgager has no rights about it. However, most of the time, the court will order a sale in lieu of foreclosure, which is a better solution so that the rights of the mortgager can also be protected. Hence, the most common remedy is for the court to order a possession and a sale. In the conduct of sale, the mortgagee has the duty of good faith and reasonable care to attain the best price to protect the mortgagee's interest. However, for possession, it is less likely to be granted due to the current pandemic following the Civil Procedure Rule Practice Direction 51Z. It can also be seen that during this pandemic, the protection of rights seem to shift towards the mortgagee's side which is further supported by the application of payment holiday. This illustrates how the rights of both parties can be balanced when a crisis happens to protect the vulnerable party. And in this current pandemic, it is the mortgager.